Let's give God the yeah, glory. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let's Hallelujah. lift him up. Jehovah, you reign, and we proclaim that there is none like you. Because of you, I am made new. Father, we worship you. Fall down on me from 
from the top of my head to my feet. Pour your oil on me, let it fall down on me. I want your glory, want your glory. I want your glory, want your glory. Yes, yes. Here's my heart, here's my soul. Holy Spirit, come in. Fill me with your consuming fire. I want your glory. Want your glory. I want your glory. Want your glory. Pour your oil on me. Let it fall down, down on me. From the top from the of my head.
Come on, let's put our hands together and celebrate the God of glory. Come on, let's honor him for his goodness, for his faithfulness. Come on, this is our, the Bible said our season is always. We know this is certainly a season where we celebrate the coming of our Lord, the price being paid for our salvation. Amen. And for the resurrection that he experienced on that wonderful day. The Bible said, had it not been for the resurrection, there'd be no reason for us to have assembled this morning. For everything that we do would be in vain. If it were not for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today we come to celebrate him and to tell God, thank you for his price. Amen. That he paid for us the suffering that he endured for us and we came today to tell him that we're grateful just to tell him much obliged for how good you've been to us thank God that we are expressive of our love for the Lord as he was expressive for us amen of his dying commitment to love us and to, and to save us how many of y'all are glad about salvation today come on and magnify God for salvation I'm glad that I'm saved anybody glad that you're saved this morning come on let's honor the Lord for salvation what an awesome God we serve we celebrate and magnify his name my God all it takes is just a memory when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all the Lord has done for me Come on, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Give him glory for salvation. Give him honor for salvation today. Thank God for his goodness. What an awesome God we serve. We are excited as we bow our heads for a moment. God, we honor you today and thank you for your presence in the lives of this people, those that's joined us in the sanctuary, those that's joined us on social media. God, we lift your name and God with a unified voice today, celebrating the fact that you love us, the fact that you sent your son to die for us, the fact that God, we bowed our hearts in submission to the powerful work that you did for us on the cross. The day, God, we come to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for the peace that's a passive understanding that keeps our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the peace that you've given us because your word said that he, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So today, God, in the midst of all the challenges that life often presents, we showed up here today to say thank you. And God, we didn't wait until we arrived here. But God, we thanked you all the way here this morning. Thank you when our foot, God, struck the floor this morning. Thank you when our eyes, God, were touched, our hearts were touched. Lord, to keep beating and we got up this morning. We got up giving you thanks. Doing what David said, oh, magnify the Lord with us. And let us exalt his name. Together, God, we honor you today for moving in this place. Thank you, Lord, for miracles, signs, and wonders that you'll wrought in the midst of your people by the power of God. We came today praying. We came today celebrating. We came today giving you thanks. We came today, God, to giving you glory. We came to exalt your magnificence and majestic name. We came, God, to tell you yes. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes to your way. God, have your way in us. And then, God, have your way through us. God, we bind the hand of the enemy and we cast the devil out. We command him right now to loose his hold on the lives of your people. God, thank you for the victory now. In the name of Jesus, victory over health conditions, victory over financial discord, victory, God, over relational, oh God, dissimulation, God, victory right now. 
over attacks in our bodies, even on our minds. God, we celebrate you right now and give your name the glory for thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Come on, if you are victor today, come on and put those anointed hands together. Let's do what the Lord said. Clap your hands, oh ye people, and lift your voice with a voice of triumph. Come on, triumphant saints, and lift that anointed voice and shout, I thank God he has delivered. I thank God he has sustained. I thank God he has kept me by the power of the blood. Come on and celebrate him and magnify his name because you know he's worthy. God, I bless your name today. Come on and clap your hands until your soul gets happy. Come on and clap your hands until doubt runs away and faith stands up. Come on and clap your hands until the affliction the enemy tried to attach to your life start to melt away from your very person. Give him the glory all over this house. He's worthy to be glorified. Come on and magnify the name of the Lord and we give him glory in this house. Come on and thank God. In God we honor you for it. And we celebrate you for it now in the name of Jesus. God move up and down every road, in and out every aisle. Touch healing and delivering, setting free, oh God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you right now that God, you're causing faith to stand up in the lives of your people. God, the word said, let the weak say that I'm strong. Anybody going through a struggle in this room, I decree and declare that God has sent an angel to minister strength to your very person. Come on and give God the glory. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and let faith stand up in your heart and declare I'm going to make it through this by the blood of Jesus Christ. I give him honor right now and I thank God because I believe it's already done. God, I call it so and believe it done in Jesus' name. Come on and lift your voice and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and give him glory. He's worthy to be glorified. What an awesome God we serve. We honor the Lord today and we praise him in this place. What an awesome God. We're excited not only about, my God, what the Lord does. We come excited because of who he is. He's a keeper. He's a sustainer. He is not only, listen, a king present. Amen. But he's a king that has delivered. We celebrate him today. If you would turn with me to uh, St. John chapter 12. Everybody excited today? Amen. I need you to adjust for a moment if you would. I want you to look down your row and make sure you're on the right row today. Amen. If you see anybody asleep, uh, just touch them and, <laughs> and encourage them in the Lord. But if you want to adjust, Find another row that may match what you know you came here for. Uh, you are free to do that. John chapter 12, when you're there, say amen. 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 We're going to read just a few verses. Uh, I want to, um, uh, to shorten it today. I wanted to read more. We'll get to it uh, from verse 12 to verse 19. Amen. Uh, let's read those verses together. Starting in verse 12, St. John chapter 12. It says, on the next day, much people that would come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, and as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's coat. 
These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause, the people also met him, that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. I want to encourage you from just this brief thing, from praises and palms, praises and palms. There are actually parades, praises, and palms in this particular text. Uh, Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we came today to give God praise. Amen. Come on, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God. The choir is going to come in just a moment. I'm going to call them. Uh, We thank God for each of you. Uh, We celebrate the Lord uh, for his presence, for his uh, favor on the lives of uh, each of you, the saints of God today. Thank God that you came excited. This is a tremendous season for the saints. Thank God for the, uh, the palm leaves that we see. Uh, around the the sanctuary. We'll talk to you about that. This is Palm Sunday. Amen. Hence the palm that you have uh, in uh, your possession. Uh, We thank God for uh, the the powerful symbolism that they exist uh, and that they represent. Uh, It is, in fact, a blessing for us uh, to be here. I do want to encourage you. Lots of uh, things happening during this uh, time of celebration. Uh, we know uh, that not only are we here uh, this morning, uh, but we want you to remember the, the service that is scheduled for the rest of uh, this week. Uh, we are here on tomorrow night, of course, for prayer, and then we're here for, on Wednesday night uh, for uh, Bible study, pastoral teaching. And then seven, on Thursday night, seven o'clock, we're coming. Uh, to receive the seven last sayings of Christ on the cross. Amen. The seven last sayings of Christ on the cross. We're going to do all seven that night. We'll serve communion that night as well. Uh, And then we're going into our weekend of celebration uh, as well. This is a powerful and pivotal time for the believers. Amen. Anybody glad about this Easter resurrection season? Come on and praise God for his goodness. We honor him for his presence. Amen. That's all right. Y'all can stand. It's not just the far right that want to give God glory, but the far left, the middle. Come on. Let's thank God. We came. If there's ever a time that we should make known our joy for the Lord, it's in this season right now. Come on. Let's praise God. While you're praising him, the choir's going to come. While you're praising him, the choir's going to come. We're going to work you a little bit today. Come on, give God praise. Thank God for his goodness. I've been praying and celebrating the Lord and thanking God for his goodness. I declare it is an interesting season that we're in right now. And I thank God that we are here a part of this season, a part of this celebration. Thank God for the choir. Let's receive the choir this time. Thank you. 
sent to a rugged cross to set me free. My Savior, bear my sins just to rescue me. My replacement took my place so I wouldn't have to die. My provider, now I have everlasting life. My Redeemer, sent to a rugged cross to set me free. My Savior, bear my sins just to rescue me. My replacement, took my place so I wouldn't have to die. My provider, now I have everlasting life. Just to know Him, just to know Him. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Just to know Savior rose from the dead so I could rise again. Awesome ruler, crucified just to call me friend. Hope of glory, one day I will get to see his face. I am grateful, he loved me enough to gladly take.
Good morning, saints. Good morning and happy Palm Sunday. Y'all, I messed up last week. I was so excited about this season. I said it was Palm Sunday last Sunday, but today is Palm Sunday and we give God praise. Hallelujah. I stand to welcome you to New Bethel Church. Whether you're in the building or virtually, we are located at 1520 Little Rock Road. You still have time to come. If you're unable to come, we are on all social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook. Um, we're also on IG. So we, we encourage you to like, tag, and share. If you're not following us, you can look for us at all things New Bethel Church of God in Christ. If it says follow, hit follow. If it says share, hit share now. If it says like, hit like. And the, and the reason why we want to do that is because we want to share the love of Christ with all of our friends and family connected to us on our social media platforms. So if you could pull up your phones and, and go ahead and share the service now so that they can get this mighty word that we're about to get. Amen. Can I count on you to do that? Amen. And also, I want to highlight that um, if you're not sure how to do that, you can grab any of the IT team members. IT team, please stand up or raise your hand so they can know who you are and then they can help guide you on how to do all these things. Um, we actually had a session this past Monday night. Um, <laughs> praise God. Um, and we were educating the saints on social media. That's what this quarter session was about. And the saints came out, they were empowered, they learned something, we had handouts. Um, if you weren't unable to come to that session, I do have handouts. You can see me after this service, I'll be at the Welcome Center. And so, don't fret, we'll have another session. We're gonna to try to do this quarterly, so the next one will be in June. So, and we'll tell you what the topic will be. We'll meet and we'll plan it out, and then you all can come and learn, and we can learn together. Amen? Amen. Thank you all for coming, and we thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad for another year, another year, another year, another year, another year that he has blessed me to get it right, another year to know him, another year to know that he wrote, died and he rose again that I would have a right to the tree of life. I thank God for these 87 years, 87. It might not mean a whole lot to you, but it means a whole lot to me. Through many dangers, tars and snares, I have already come. I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. This is the day that he has made. God's been so good to me. He's made so many ways. He's opened so many doors. I thank God for the shepherd of this house, for Bishop Tommy A. Murphy, Lady Doris Murphy, and to each one of the saints of the Most High God. I thank God for this privilege to just testify and to let you know how good God is. You know, we go through a lot of things. Sometimes people don't never know what you go through. And I want to say to this whole body of Christ, everybody that know me, any word that I have offended you, hurt you, or said anything, or acted in any way that caused you to be offended in any way, if you don't want to come to me, I want to say to you, forgive me. Because I'm determined I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I done got too close now. It's been almost 74 years. And I'm saying to him every day, I'm not about to miss it. How about that, y'all got I'm not going to miss it. Praise our God. Whatever it takes, whatever else I got to do, I'm going to do it. It doesn't make any difference. Let me tell you, tomorrow is not promised to you. Oh, tomorrow is not promised because they're coming and going. You don't have to look and think the old folks is dying. No, it's the young folks that are leaving this world now. Praise our God. So that's what I want to say, forgive me. 
You know, uh, and I want to thank all of you for blessing me, loving me, caring for me, uh, showing your kindness to me, and especially to our Pastor Bishop Murphy, Lady Dodds, and to all the saints of God through my birthday. It has been a, a year, it's been a birthday that's been uh, far and above more than I could have asked to think. My daughter, Renee Walker, a mighty woman of God, uh, saved at four years old and have walked with God and been just been great through the years. But for some reason, about four years, I hadn't heard from her. And so, uh, you know, you go through all things, go through your mind, you go through your mind, and this, that, and other. But I thank God every day it was saying, God, anywhere, and that's the reason I'm saying what I'm saying now, when I say anybody I've offended or hurt in any way, you don't never know what affects people's minds, how people feel about things, what they'll take and do. I don't want to cause nobody to be lost because I'm not going to be lost. <laughs> any way I can help you get to heaven, you're going to go to heaven because I am intend to go. So I hadn't heard from her for over four years. So the first of the month I had been praying and I said to the Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you. Every day which I called her name Renee, and he came to me, he said, you will, you will praise me and thank me through the time of your birthday. You know, when God said, tell you something, you can take it to the bank. You don't have to worry about it bouncing. On Saturday evening at seven something, my son Jonathan called and said, mama, what you doing? I said, nothing. He said, are you sitting down? I said, no. He said, well, sit down. He said, because I'm trying to get a call together, and I want you to be able to talk on this call. He said, just sit down and get good and relaxed, and I got a call for you, and give me time to get it all together, which he was, <laughs> he already had it together. He was just helping me. <laughs> I had no idea, so I sit there. So he said, all right, everything's together. So he said, all right, you, you all can go now. And so she said to me, say, hello, mama. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You read about prodigal son, what he felt about his son. You know, sometimes you say, I know how you felt until you go through it. You don't know how it feels. But I thank God. I thank God. She's well. She's doing fine. And I praise God. And I said to the enemy, I will never be ashamed to stand and acknowledge anything that God is doing. If there's anybody out there got any kind of problem that you don't want nobody to know about, you don't need to cover up. Just give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus and keep thanking him because he is more than enough. So I thank God for Pastor Murphy giving me this opportunity to thank you and to give you uh, this report on my daughter as you continue to pray for her. I've talked to her again since then. She's then talked to each one of her brothers. So I thank God how God is bringing it together because he is more than enough. I ask you to continue to pray for me. Let's celebrate the Lord. Come on, as you praise God for Mother, I believe God will do it in your house as well. It may not be the same situation, but He's the same God. Whatever man soweth, come on, let's praise God for the victory. Every time we see the devil defeated, it brings joy to our soul. We thank God for each of you today. Uh, it's a blessing, as we said, for us uh, to be here. Uh, thank God for uh, District Missionary Mother Walker, who just uh, just shared with us. Uh, we thank God for her, the sister uh, Montoya, who leads the IT team, encouraging us uh, to uh, Amen uh, uh, to support the work and to engage. And also highlighting their interest uh, in 
in the helping uh, from a, a technology standpoint as well. So thank you, uh, Sister Montoya, for all that, that your group is uh, doing. Come on, let's put our hands together for the choir as well. We praise God for Missionary Murphy and the choir ministry. Out of their hearts, we praise God for them. To all of you, the Lord's people, uh, we thank God for you. God bless our church mother, Mother Canty. Would you stand there? Praise God. Come on, let's celebrate our church mother. Amen. Pastor Kelly and uh, Lady Kelly, uh, to Pastor McLeod, thank God for these saints of God. Pastor Williams and, uh, and First Lady Williams are uh, ministering today in Greensboro uh, for a, uh, in a worship service this morning. But we pray for them and to Apostle Williams and Lady Williams are ministering in Dillon, South Carolina, uh, this, uh, this morning. So we thank God for them. And I uh, honor the Lord for my wife, my sweetheart, who is, she is dutifully working today. Amen. So we miss her. She's a fragrance when she's here. And, uh, amen. And when she's not here. And she is certainly the rose of this celebration. We thank God for her. Can we put our hands together for my wife in her absence? Thank God for her. And to those of you that are guests today, we uh, thank God for her. I see some of the family members from uh, uh, Dr. Blevins, uh, whose birthday and his uh, elevation to the doctorate uh, we celebrated last night, and many of his family members are here from, uh, from all over. We're going to ask this family to stand. Praise God for them. Stand up, Dr. Blevins. There are some guests that may not know who this man of God is. Wave your hands so they'll know which one you are. I'm going to ask his family to remain while everybody else is seated for those that, that came. I promise y'all if each of them uh, came this morning that was here last night, uh, it would be, uh, man, that whole sex would be had for. We praise God. Thank God. But these saints have traveled from all over the place. So we thank God. Can we celebrate the Lord for these saints of God tonight? We honor the Lord for each of them. And while they're standing, I'm going to ask other guests, if you're a guest, if you would stand for just a moment, let's celebrate you. If you are here and you are not a member of this church, if you would stand, and we're so glad to have you. Amen. Now, y'all know folk don't like to stand and be acknowledged, so I'm just going to ask everybody, would you just greet somebody close to you and tell that person it's so good to see you here? There's some people... On the low key, just sitting down, glad that they're here. We thank God. So easy. It's so easy. Tell them you're so glad they came. goodness. You'll hear uh, further announcements as we go uh, through the service. I want to lift these verses uh, that I've shared. You know, I, I've, I've given my speech concerning sort of uh, thematic uh, preaching. Uh, you know, I'm not the boss, but the Lord is. Uh, but I do have the, uh, the privilege today that he's given to share uh, on this Palm Sunday. 
some information about Palm Sunday, the three things uh, that I will eventually try to convey to you uh, from this text. But uh, anytime you approach the text, I don't know that we get much beyond the circumference of it, uh, but we will share with you what the Lord has, has given. It's just a blessing for us to be able to assemble uh, because the Lord said not to forsake the assembling of ourselves uh, together. Uh, and then he said, as the manner of some is, there's still many uh, in this uh, season that we're in that have made the choices, uh, of course, to not uh, assemble in church. We still serve individuals uh, through um, social media. And it, it's our joy to do that. Uh, but it's something about being in the house of the Lord uh, that's just tough to uh, duplicate. Uh, you know, I was traveling, uh, my wife and I were on, uh, on vacation recently, and, and, and I joined on social media, and it's just uh, different. Uh, not only did I not get a chance to, well, I preached to my wife. She's the only one that was there. Uh, so that was not the thing that I missed, but the Fellowship of the Saints uh, is dramatically impactful uh, when we come. Uh, but that's one of the things that, uh, that helps us is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, so we honor the Lord today for just giving us the privilege of coming. Uh, and this is a moment for us. I'm here to tell you that this is a very historic moment for the church. Uh, as we go through this, uh, some people call it uh, you know, a, a reformation that we're in and you go back to uh, early 325 the uh, Nicene Council when uh, Reformation came essentially focusing on the, the Catholic Church as tenets of, uh, of, of serving the Lord uh, was under the microscope uh, and then another uh, Reformation on the Westland uh, 1700s uh, during the 18th uh, century uh, and, and then there's a, a perspective that the church is in the Reformation now. Uh, you know, I, I, I struggle with that theological uh, viewpoint simply because of the fact that, uh, that the only Reformation that we see uh, perhaps now is uh, sort of a digression uh, from what uh, the Lord did in uh, the... Um, the, uh, the 19th century, in the late 1800s and uh, in the, uh, the uh, 1900s, concerning the Reformation, concerning holiness and Pentecostalism. Uh, and you're familiar with that, uh, the Azusa uh, Street Revival, uh, when the Holy Ghost uh, you know, came uh, in such tremendous fashion here. Uh, but now what you see is a move away from Pentecostalism to more of a digression to extreme liberalism. Uh, and that's not a, a, a biblical uh, reformation. Uh, but what you see is a slip, uh, maybe a downward spiral in the commitment and conviction uh, in the church. And, and this particular text talks to us about the things that the Lord went through and how it parallels with what you see happening uh, you know, in the church today and some of the reasons why uh, people mistaken it. There is uh, an erroneous dichotomy uh, that the church base its response uh, to life events uh, upon. And all I just said to you was this. Some people say one of the bases for atheism is this, that if he's really God, why do I go through what I go through right now? If he's really God, why is there suffering in the earth the way that it is? It is an erroneous dichotomy that people that are blessed don't suffer. When the Lord clearly told us, many are the afflictions of the sinners. Oh, you read your Bible. Amen. Thank God I'm in the right place. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver. And if, in fact, you believe uh, that only folk suffer are those that are not righteous, that are those that are sinners, those that are not blessed, then I would say in this season we all have to conclude that Jesus Christ was not blessed. 
He was not righteous. He was not saved because he suffered. He suffered. He went through. Amen. And if he went through, and we all know that he is righteous. <laughs> he, he, he is salvation. Not that he is saved. He is salvation. Mother said all the ways. <laughs> Amen. And we know that to be the case. So let, let's stay tuned as we look at some of the verses that talk about the things that the Lord went through and, and to perhaps start to, to challenge some of the, the things that we've heard other individuals say and things that we've even said ourselves. There are some crossroads that all of us face in our lives. But one of the things that the word of God reminds us as we get to this uh, parade of praises and palms uh, that we are those that remember how good the Lord has been to us and how good he is and how good he will always be. And, and it's interesting to me as well because one of the things that you know that if he is good, then that means, listen, uh, he's always good. If he's ever been good, he is always good because he never changed. He said, I'm the same today, the same yesterday, and he said, I'm the same forever. God encourage us uh, as we assemble to allow the flow of the Spirit of God uh, to do what the Spirit of God does. It informs us. The Spirit of God, he unites us. Uh, he moves us toward true fellowship, and he moves us to a love that's genuine. Now, if I stayed here for the next 10 minutes, uh, for those that, that I perhaps, you know, don't further uh, bore, uh, you know, to death, uh, I could just stand here and say that. Move us to true fellowship and to genuine love and then to selfless intercession. Genuine love is when you can love not because of, but love in spite of. I'm here to suggest today that that's a challenge for most of us, is loving genuinely. Amen. You know, we, it's easy for us, and it's more common for us to love when you love us. Amen. When you are walking the way I want you to walk, the way when you are handling me, the way I want you to handle me. Then I can love you. But if you ever cross uh, me, then that's the end of my love for you. You can take that to the bank, as Mother Walker said. That's not the love that God wants us to walk in. But the Holy Ghost will lead us into true fellowship. Uh, that Listen, what, what, what's called, word that we don't use much, it, it was very... Um, uh, you know, routine uh, in the church years ago, the word uh, koinonia. Uh, and then when everybody learned it, people stopped saying it. Uh, but, but that's a, a, a sort of an, an undefinable uh, difference between perhaps us and the presence of the Lord in our life. That means we're so intertwined with God uh, that there's no defining uh, start or end point. That the things that you do reflects what God has spoken to and what he desired to speak through your life. Amen. That's the kind of fellowship uh, Cornelia suggests. It is a, a cord that's intertwined. Uh, and it, 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 it sort of uh, uh, de defines who we are, not just now, but who we will be when challenges, uh, listen, afflict our lives. We have to believe what the word says. Many, listen, the Lord said this, that there are things that come in our life, and God told us uh, in uh, Romans 8, 28, that all things will work together. All things, listen, that's not good may happen to your life, but God would take what's not good and work it for your good. Anybody tried the Lord and have found him to be someone that would take what's not good and then work it for your good? And not only true fellowship, but selfless intercession. And what mother just exemplified, she didn't know this was in the notes, humble forgiveness, reconciliation. It's easy for us uh, to not be willing to forgive. Amen? Because we know the Lord has already forgiven us. So now we become God. 
Let me tell you uh, about the spirit of Jezebel real quick. This is just a passing note for those that take notes. Uh, we like to be a, a teaching environment here just to make sure that we, uh, you know, understand and, 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 and embrace the things that, uh, that we celebrate as saints of God. The spirit of Jezebel carries three different, uh, you know, perhaps characteristics. One uh, is, is prostitution. And prostitution is when, just real quickly, prostitution is when you, uh, listen, sell yourself short in the, listen, relationship that you have with others here uh, on the earth. And especially for those that are married, for those that, listen, that uh, will prostitute your own self with someone that you're not married to. All right? That's what, that's prostitution. And also, uh, watch this, one that we don't, often uh, you know, embrace. And that's prostitution also happens when you are a child of God and you sell yourself to another God for the sake of gaining favor with others on the earth. Are uh, you hearing what I'm saying? You see, we, we don't mind. You know, we, we get one facet of that, but, but how often do we sell ourselves to what the culture says should be Listen, the thing that's most common. We are so eager to do what the culture does, we'll come up with ways. We were traveling the other day, and I, uh, a couple weeks ago, as I mentioned, and we were standing somewhere uh, in this marketplace, and I saw uh, this, uh, you know, we were, the place where we were had recently had a major uh, uh, catastrophe, and people are starting to rebuild and come back. Uh, so they had the shops that were in buildings are now in huts and tents uh, out on the, uh, the the walkway. So there was a tattoo place right there. And I heard the lady saying, we got tattoos that just last for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, or we can ha we got them that last as long as you want them to last. I mean, you're going to be here for a week, here you can get a seven-day tattoo. <laughs> and y'all know, man, if the folk were lined up to get their stuff. Uh, prostitution. I'm just going to tell you, if, listen, if you want to identify with other gods, that's the spirit of Jezebel. Also, the second, uh, that, that's the uh, idolatrous uh, spirit. It's the second thing uh, that uh, Jezebel spirit uh, designates. And we want to be those, listen, that we are unapologetically committed and inextricably tied to the Lord. And we ain't ashamed of that. We're not here trying to, listen, amalgamate with the world. That's what Jezebel did with Ahab. She, uh, let, me, let me move on. Uh, that's what she, so we don't want to do it. We, we, we want to be the persons when folk look at you, they know you mean God. They don't need to see your Bible and, my God, have you pull your uh, preaching license out. You ought to know, listen, they'll know you by your fruit. Oh, God, to be able to look at you and, and listen and, and know by your words. If, if I've talked to you eight times and Jesus hadn't come out yet, amen, it's just in you. Amen. That's what the, the Lord desires. So prostitution, idolatry, and the third thing is manipulation. Those are things that Jezebel's spirit that, uh, represents. Uh, and, and we're not those that move ahead or, or seek to get any kind of advantage through manipulation. That's not what we do. We're not here. We believe God. Amen. Don't believe that if you stayed in a hotel and they didn't charge you for a room one night, uh, you know, that you start dancing and talking about a blessing. No, you just stole a night in the hotel. No, it's when you tell the manager, listen, that you weren't charged right. So God don't need uh, debauchery and underhanded stuff to be a blessing to your life. He, the Bible said the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And he turns it in whatever direction he chooses. Tell the folk, listen, that are in charge, that can make those decisions and let God touch their heart. Amen. They manage the assets. They know what they can. They have the latitude to do stuff. God will touch their heart. They'll look at you and say, I don't know why I'm doing this. But just because we didn't exemplify Listen, the, the, the proper business acumen and getting your, uh, your uh, itinerary, getting your profile right, 
we're going to give you this week for free. And then that's when you tell them nobody can do me like God. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, so we don't look for underhanded ways to get ahead. I mean, because anything that you do to get something, you have to do that same foolishness to hold on to it, to keep it. Thank you. God's goal when he sent his son, it's the same thing that this season of Palm Sunday represents. God's goal is restoration. For us, rest, restoration in us. Amen. And also restoration for others is what he desires. He wants his church, amen, to be esteemed above, listen, our church. He wants his church to be esteemed above our church. And may I drop another just point uh, in your heart that you can make note of, that no matter what you believe about church, the reason why you ought to keep coming to church is because this is the Lord's church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let me say it this way. No matter what you think about what you see, Amen. I'm here to tell you, this is the Lord's church. And, and this is the challenge that we have, saints of God. Look down your row and listen and watch this. Everybody in this room, keep your, keep your eyes peered down the row. I want you to look at this. How many of us in this room know we're going to heaven? Raise your hand. Amen. Now, while your hands are up, can I encourage you this? The Lord said that, keep your hand up. Don't put them down just yet. Thank you all for, so much for helping me preach today. The Lord said, I'm going to rapture my church out of the church. Now look, keep your hands up. Look down your row. He said, I'm going to come and get those in my church from the church. Now somebody on that row. Now if I gave everybody the mic, everybody, everybody's going. But the Lord said, no, I'm going to come in. He said, there's going to be two in the bed. Let me read the note again. It says, he came to, re to rapture, listen, to redeem his church. Listen, and to transform it from our church. It's not church as you perceive. It's church as he has declared. The Bible said, listen, there are ways which seemeth right unto a man. He said, but the end is going to be problematic. Amen? And that's what the Lord said. And listen, and know that. And that's why you don't ever stop coming to church. Say, I would go to church, but there are some hypocrites there. Where else are you going to find a hypocrite? If you're in a beer joint or wherever you are, doing whatever you can do, the only place you find a hypocrite is in the church. I mean, so why would you be surprised that there are hypocrites in the church? Amen? Listen, those that have made a, a decision to not serve God are those that are declaring that God's not sufficient. But I'm here to tell you that, listen, and you all know that that's the only place, this is the only place is the Lord's house. You got to know it's the deception of the enemy when you make a choice to fall away from the church because there's nobody perfect in the church like I am. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And y'all know we never do that uh, like we uh, do with so many other places that's so much an int integral part of our lives. How many of y'all have ever had a bad experience when you've taken a flight somewhere? Raise your hand. Amen. How many of y'all have been back on a plane since that bad experience? Raise your hand. Amen. How many of y'all have been to a restaurant and had a bad experience? Raise your hand. Every time you go almost. How many of y'all have been back? You didn't stop eating because you had a bad experience, did you? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Listen, I want to be in place no matter what transpires in my life. I'm not going to allow the manipulation, the deception of the enemy to stop me from doing what the Lord has commissioned me to do. Nobody in this room saved you. The Lord is the only Savior. Nobody in, uh, in the universe delivered you. The Lord delivered you. And as long as he's holy, amen, listen, I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to be here, amen, because it's his heaven that I want to go to. It's nobody else's. Listen, that I'm going, that I have a desire to be a part of. His church is the church that we seek to be, listen, to present 
and to represent to the world. What he seeks from us is faithful and trusting worship. Amen. That's what he seeks from us, seeking to obey the call to his mission. And so many of us today made a choice that, listen, uh, that it don't take all that. We made a choice that, it, listen, that I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to serve God, but I won't serve him like my mother served him. I serve him like my father served him. That's what the, listen, the current theologic reformation is, is when now, the, listen, the, the, the millennials uh, and, and others, uh, Generation X and Ys, that says it just don't take all that. It doesn't matter how I roll. I still love God. Well, what the, the challenge that I have with that is simply this. The Lord already told us there, listen, with your lips you praise me, but your heart, he says, is far from me. There is a standard the Lord has set, and he wants us to embrace it. I'm going to show it to you in, in the text. The Lord said, listen, I'm committed. We got to be committed to sharing the kingdom message of the king, who is what the text deals with. And the citizens that are called into the kingdom, that's each one of us. God's emphasis is on being and not doing. God wants us to not, listen, call ourselves the church. He wants us just to be the church. He wants you to be an example. Amen. He wants you to be a model for him. Before you open your mouth, I've said it's not just articulation, but it's demonstration. It's not just what we say, but it's what the Lord Listen, has already said. That's what he's called us to do. He wants to be those, listen, that are saying, as the Lord said, be ye holy. And y'all know that don't preach much uh, anymore, does it? Amen. And it won't maybe after I'm gone, but as long as I'm here. Uh-huh. Be ye holy. He says, be righteous. That's when you can really be happy. Amen. Anytime I hear somebody declaring that this person had their own truth. I never heard, listen in the word of God, where your own truth will get you to where God wants you to be. Because the Lord said, I am the way, the truth, and the life is what he says. Our doing always reflects, listen, who we choose and seek to be. And we say to God, be the glory. In the text, it talks about, it says that Jesus, in this text on the next day, now it's hard to deal with what happened in chapter 12 if you don't look at perhaps what happened in 6 or what happened in chapter 11. Real quickly, let me just uh, go back real quick to, to uh, chapter 6 in John and, and see what the Lord, what, uh, listen, Israel wanted and what the Lord came to provide for them. The Bible says uh, in John chapter 6, verse 15, it says, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him, by force to make him a king, he departed again unto a mountain himself alone. Now, all he's saying in that text is this. He's coming, listen, and in the text, and on the next day, much people that will come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, listen, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. They're saying in the text, listen, that he's a king that's come. But what I want to tell you in the points today is this, listen, that not only, uh, it, it, listen, is, is he a king, but they wanted to, listen, crown him king before time. In chapter 6, verse 15, he said, I left. Listen, I, listen, I, I, I bolted from that, uh, listen, assembly, because he said, it's not my time yet. He didn't come, he came to be, listen, as a king, but not as they supposed. Can I say that to you one more time? He came to be a king, but not as they supposed. It's interesting, they celebrated him in the text. And when you see the word Hosanna, I believe somebody in this room would believe that Hosanna means praise. Uh-huh, and, and Hosanna, listen, it really means, listen, say. Uh-huh, H-A-N-N-A, H-A-N-N-A means, listen, it means praise, and the N-A-H means now. That's all they're saying. Hosanna means save us right now. And what he's doing is quoting Old Testament scriptures. 
in God's desire, if you believe that it's just rhetoric, what you've heard so far this morning, one of the verses that I quote off in Psalm number 107, verse 20, when the Lord said he sent his word and healed them. If you look at Psalm number 107, it is a constant theme that we follow, listen, often in the context of our lives. We love God uh -huh, as long as he's blessing us. We love him. Uh -huh. And so they, they love the Lord. They said, come on and save us right now. We need a savior is what they declared. And all they're saying is, listen, the reason, and let me tell you, if you have a, a, a palm, a leaf, branch, listen, wave it in the air real quick. Uh-huh. That means, listen, that's some good stuff you got in your hand. That's some good stuff that you got. Palms mean this. It means prosperity. Uh-huh. It means health. And it means wealth. Uh-huh. Palm branches mean prosperity. It means health. And it means wealth. Y'all know during the pandemic, listen, during the season that we're in, listen, often we did, listen, it not only affect, listen, affected us spiritually, but it affected us, listen, economically. Uh-huh, you got to know that. You got to know that, listen, so when it came during a calamity time of their life, they were crying out to God, save us now. Bless us right now. I dare somebody shout, Lord, I need you to do it for me right now. Uh-huh, listen, and this is what, what the Lord, what the word says. And, and all the Lord is telling us in, in this text, it is Psalm number 107, it goes on, it keeps reminding us. It says, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. It said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And the Bible says, listen, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the rest and from the north and from the south. And the Bible said, then they wandered. Do you see that in verse number four? They wandered in the wilderness. In a solitary way, they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. And look at what they did, y'all. The Bible said, look, look at this. He said, give thanks to the Lord because he redeemed them. Uh -huh. And he said, let the redeemed say something. Are there any redeemed in this room today? Come on and say something if you know you've been redeemed. But look at what, look at what he said, though. He said, listen, he said he gathered them out of the land from the east and from the west, north and south. And they, then they wondered. After they cried out to him and he delivered them, they said, Lord, listen, I'm redeemed. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming me. And then they said, now that I'm redeemed, let me tell you what I'm going to do in verse 4. They wandered in the wilderness. In the solitary, they found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Uh-huh. And led them forth. Y'all know we, listen, we don't mind coming to the house and crying out to God when there's a need. The challenge is many of us, listen, don't embrace the fact that we need God every day of our life. When your bank account is overflowing, you need God. You need the wisdom of the Lord to lead you and to guide you. Listen in every facet of your life. The Bible said he led them forth by the right way. They cried out to him. He led them in verse number six. They cried to the Lord. Verse seven, he led them. Verse eight, he says, listen, I'm going to live. And you read this text, you'll see the same pattern, listen, duplicated over and over and over again. But look at what he says. He says, they cried to me. God said, I delivered them. Uh-huh, they wandered in the wilderness, hungry and thirsty. They cried to the Lord. He brought them out in verse 6. Verse 7, he led them forth to the right way. And then verse 8, the Lord just simply says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wondrous works for the children of men. He said, I just want you to praise me. He said, I, listen, I don't have a problem with you crying out to me. Come on, tell your neighbor, if you need the Lord for anything, tell your neighbor, God wants you to cry out to him. Come on, tell your neighbor this, tell him, but the Lord don't want you to forget that he did that. Y'all know the Lord said when Israel grew fat, she kicked. Some of y'all know how it is sometime, and you keep reading this verse, keep reading this song. The same thing is repeated over and over again. It's easy for us to remember that we need God when our money is funny. 
Uh huh. When I change, it's strange. You know the story. Uh huh. Nickels are fickle, dimes won't come on time. You know, it's easy to remember the Lord did. Uh huh. But when, listen, we get out of that distress, we act like we brought ourselves up out of all that. My God, listen. Y'all know the, the, the tales in the word of God. The Bible said that he called folk to work. And they said, I would work with you, Lord, but I just got some new land and I got to go inspect it. Who buys property and ain't never looked at it? Sound like an excuse to me. Uh-huh. Listen, but it said in the text, he says, oh, that men would praise me for my good stuff that I've done in your life. It says, for the good that I do. Listen, for, listen, the children of men. It says, verse 9 says, for he satisfied the longing soul and he filled the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound and affliction. Listen, uh, and iron is what he says. He tells us, all I want you to do is praise me. He said, what I want you to do is to tell others that I'm the God that brought you out. That I don't want to just keep going through, listen, this re re repetitious cycle. But he said, I want you to let folk know I'm the God that brought you out. Anybody in this room can lift your hand right now and declare, it's God that's brought me to where I am right now. That was their cry to save us now. The Bible said in verse 13, it said that in John 12, they took branches in homage to him as a king. And went out to meet him, and they began shouting, and keep shouting, Hosanna, blessed, or celebrated, or praised. Is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Know in the text we're studying from this, Israel called Jesus king. And also, please know that this is the first time Israel called him by this messianic name. They never called him king before now. Uh-huh. They wanted to in, in John 6, but this is when Listen, they called him king, and he allowed it to be so. But listen, but he know that, listen, this was built up in, in verse number, in chapter number 11, in the book of St. John. And what happened was, in his re listen, reference in the text that we read, because he raised Lazarus from the dead in chapter 11, the Lord said, they're coming after me now. They know that I've got power to do stuff. They know that I'm the real deal, and they're coming after me now. I wonder if it could be that maybe the Lord, who cannot change, just couldn't, listen, hide the fact that he didn't mind giving his life for those, listen, that needed life. I wonder if he couldn't just help being himself, my God, because he is the savior of all mankind. He knew when he was standing at the tomb of Lazarus, he knew that chapter 12 was coming. When he would ride into Bethany, listen, the triumphant entry that he made on his way to Calvary. And he said, I'm going to do it anyhow. Don't tell me he didn't just back into the crucifixion. He walked into the crucifixion. He said, no man takes my life. And look at this, y'all. He did it. He gave Lazarus life knowing it was going to cost his. I wonder how many of us, and y'all know we sometimes struggle. Uh-huh, with just our ego. Ain't nothing about our life. Our egos are more important than life. My God, I wouldn't even tell you that I did you wrong because my ego won't let me. I won't tell you that I'm sorry because my pride won't let me. But God said I'm going to do it if it costs my life. He said this man needs life and I'm going to do it no matter what it costs me. Tell your neighbor he died for you on purpose. He did it on purpose. My God, listen, so that you can have life and have life in abundance is what the Lord said. Listen to each one of us. He called us, listen, each by name, and delivered and saved us by the power and authority of the blood. And the Bible goes on to declare, listen, in this text, they're crying out to him in this messianic way, calling him king. And it's interesting, y'all, don't miss this point, the fact that, listen, he is now, they're calling him king because, listen, this is, in fact, when he comes in to Bethany and they perceive that he's coming to save them from the rigid and the rough 
uh-huh, listen, Roman rule. And they're saying, this is our man. This is our guy. And so that's why they came with palm leaves. That's why they're quoting Old Testament scriptures in, in here. Because they believe that, listen, he's coming to give them some good stuff. Oh, glory to God. And that's why they're celebrating him. Listen to this. And we'll find as we, listen, let's skip through this over the next couple minutes. Listen, you'll find that what they did was this. They celebrated him as king when they believed that he was coming to do good stuff for him. But when they, listen, but when they found out that he came not to give them what they want, but to give them what they needed, that's when they turned their backs on him. They gave him leaves, my God, when they thought he came to give them what they wanted. But when he gave them what they needed, then they gave him a crown. Listen to thorns, and they said, crucify him. They were crying out to him, save us before. And after that, they said, crucify him because he came to give us, listen, what we need. And don't miss the fact in the text that what the Lord shows us, y'all, is this. He comes not to give you a temporary solution. Every time you call on the name of the Lord, he gives you a permanent resolution. My God, I'm not going to give you a quick fix. I'm going to give you what will last, listen, you for an eternity. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to settle in for the long haul. Oh, glory to God. He's going to give you what you need, not just simply what you want. Oh, glory to God. The Lord said, listen, when they're crying out Hosanna, they're quoting a messianic scripture and they are accepting for the first time they've accepted Jesus not just as a prophet. And this is big for Israel because he was nothing but a prophet before now uh -huh, or a teacher or a rabbi. But he's now the king is what they know. They're welcoming Jesus Christ as a king and they're calling him Jesus Christ Hosanna, which means, listen, help now, which means deliver now, which means bring now prosperity. More people believe that Hosanna, listen, it means, listen, praise, but he's saying it means get us out of this and get us out now. Uh-huh, that's what the word says in Psalm number 118. Listen, verse 25, 20 says, oh Lord, save now. Psalm 118, verse 25. Verse 26, you know what, uh, listen, Hosanna means because, listen, you, you find that in Psalm number 118, verse 25, it says, Lord, save now. We beseech you, O oh Lord, we beseech you, send now prosperity and give us success. And y'all know there's many times that's our cry. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It's the same verse that's quoted in John chapter 12. Do you see that? We bless you, listen, from the house of the Lord. You've come into his sanctuary under his, listen, guardianship. That's powerful if you read that. He's saying you're under the guardianship of the Lord himself. They're saying to the Lord in this messianic verse in Psalm 18 to save right now. Deliver us, Lord, and send prosperity in our life. Think about, listen, how this meshes or aligns with what's being cried out. Listen, in this season that we've been in. Many folk during the pandemic cried out, prayer gone on around the world. Listen, to different sex. Listen, it didn't matter. My God, what land it was in. There are, listen, streams of video that shows, listen, masses gathered in different countries. Didn't even speak the same language, but gathered for the, listen, the crowd in a universal language called prayer. And don't y'all know that when times are at their darkest, that's when folk often flock, listen, to the house of God crying out to God, deliver us. And I'm here to tell you, there's nothing wrong with that. Anything that drives you closer to the Lord or drive you back to acknowledge him, I'm here to tell you, is worth it. And I want to encourage everybody, don't ever stop calling on the name of the Lord. Don't y'all know that he's the only solution? My God, if we were in, <clears throat> this in some discussion right now about what can be done, my God, to transform a world that we live in. This is a world, uh, listen, they used to have stuff on TV about folk going wild during, uh, uh, listen, spring break. But now folk are going wild every week of the year. It's time for us to cry out to God. It's time for us to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I, listen, I, 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 I need you the more in my life. It's time to cry. Listen, and there's nothing more. All the, the discussions going on around the world. Listen, about what can be done to bring transformation to the earth. 
And don't y'all know that, listen, when you start looking, reading in Romans about, listen, the sin that exists in the earth. One thing we got to remind ourselves is when you read in, in, in Romans uh, that in Galatians, listen, that list of sins that the Bible talks about, all he's saying to us is not that, listen to, to this, that, that God is going to judge, um, uh, listen, the, the West or judge the U.S. or judge the country that we live in. That doesn't mean that he's going to judge it for those sins. I'm going to tell you, when you read that list in Galatians, that meant it had already been judged. He's already called it out. It's already going on in this earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's just simply telling us now, listen, that the only focus, saints of God, is this. We need, listen, to focus our attention on the salvation and being saved. That's the only thing. Listen, the Bible says righteousness exalts the nation. It's not just crying out about the major different immorality that exists, but when you bring it to your house, when you say, Lord, do it in me, that's the revival that God wants that's going to bring about a change here in the earth. It's when we, listen, revert to being and not just doing. When we, listen, become, the Bible says, you are a living epistle that's known and read of all men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, somebody shout, I'm going to walk it from now on. It's not just telling folk about it. It's about being about it. It's about folks saying, I need God in my life. And I want to be, listen, in my home. I want to be, listen, his child on my job. Listen, I'm not, the, listen, I got to check the bad boy attitude at the door. Let me hurry on here. Think about, listen, how many times, listen, we have been, even in, in other times in our lives, we prayed this prayer, Lord, listen, don't just save us. Don't just deliver us. But God, deliver us right now. I need him in my life. That's what the word of God is declaring. Also this morning, I'm going to look at the verse. Listen, that's similar. That, that, that saints, listen, begin to cry out to the Lord. I wonder if we can embrace that model in our life and start crying out more to the Lord, to the God of the Bible. God, listen, saints are not mad at us because we cry out to him. And then if there's a challenge in your life and you slip back into a place that you know God has not ordained for you, then God says, call on my name again. Come on, somebody shout, I'm going to cry out to him again. The Bible declares when Israel cried out to the Lord and he delivered them. And he said, I desire that you would praise me like this all the time. Is that what he said in Psalm number 107? He said, praise me all the time. Don't just forget that I delivered you last week, but I'm your deliverer right now. Don't just forget, listen, that I brought you out last week, but give me praise right now. Come on, touch your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you have a praise for your deliverer right now? Uh-huh. That's what the Lord said. Listen. And then he encouraged us to praise him. I got to get to that. The Bible said in Psalm number 34, verse 1, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall always be in my mouth. Uh -huh. My soul makes her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. It's what the Bible said. Listen, it said the humble downtrodden will hear and rejoice. It said let us lift his name together. We got to be those that just unashamedly lift the name of the Lord. We got, he said, I would that you would give goodness to me for my goodness to the children of men. Anybody in this room has God been good to lately? Uh huh, listen. So let me encourage you, please. Let's just do what the Lord said. Do he said, I want you to bless me because I, the Lord said, have been good to you. I don't want you to roll up in here. My God, listen, like you did it all by yourself. I don't want you to show up, listen, in life tomorrow, acting like, listen, that you are your own, listen, a resource. But God is your source. How many of us know I owe God praise? When you look back where God brought me from, that's why we don't get mad at folk that run around. That, listen, we let them, listen, the spirit of God do what he wants to do in this place. My God, you ain't got to wait for the altar call to come to the altar. If you want to come now, just come. To Let God have his way. Come on, tell your neighbor, this is the Lord's house. Nobody owns this house. This is the Lord is the owner of this place. And this is the Lord said, listen, first, listen, you got to know the Lord said, save now. And don't y'all know when we talk about salvation, it's a power word because salvation means nothing is missing, nothing is lacking. And if you're saved, then nothing is missing. 
Why do I need to do all the stuff that the world is doing? To feel like I'm somebody. See how quiet it is in this, listen, in this Presbyterian church? Y'all heard the quiet and it just, sung, just fell right to the floor. Why do we need, why do we need likes on Facebook? I've never, listen, I've never needed anything outside of myself, listen, but the Lord. Listen, if God said that you are mine, can that just be enough? Can, can God just be enough? Oh, glory to God. Listen, and y'all know that the more we embrace what the world does, then what does the world have to come into the house of the Lord for? When all that's in the world, the stuff that they've come out of, they're really stepping back into. Because the person they're talking to look more like what they came out of than they do. You don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> we celebrate. Listen, it's just the book. The Bible said come out from among them. And he said, for you to be separate, said the Lord. Now, it's the Lord that said it. It's not the pastor. It's not me. It's God. He's the one that said, be separate. And, listen, and, this, and then you got to come out from some of the folk that's come out. Because they ain't quite came out all the way yet. They still coming out too. Oh, glory to God. Look down your road. Don't start no trouble. But there's some that need. My God. You better know, listen, you got to come out from the come outers. Glory to God. Listen, the Lord said, he said, save us now. Save means nothing missing, nothing lacking. Thank God I'm saved. Glory to God. Listen, second thing he said in John 15, he says, listen, do not fear, daughter of Zion. Your king is coming. Seated on a donkey's coat. And this, listen, that's the Lord's humility being exemplified there. Second point I want to make you listen. He says, save now. Second point is, don't fear. One of the most powerful things in the word of God is the Lord saying, don't fear. Now listen, if I said nothing else, you've already heard it. Listen, you have nothing that's going on in your life you need to be fearful of. Nothing going on in your life that you need to fear. Did you hear what I said? Nothing. The Lord said, fear not. And listen, watch this. When you study the word, listen, the, uh, the, the word uh, fear not. Listen, there are 365 times you find in the Bible the words fear not. 365. Y'all know what that means? Y'all know what that means? There's 365 in there? That means you got one for every day. That means there's no day when fear is, listen, is, is, uh, is accepted. Tell your neighbor, I ain't scared, I ain't scared. Listen, the Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Come on, somebody shout right back and shout, fear not, fear not. Listen, no matter what. And the command, listen, and this is not, this is, it's the most repeated, listen, a command in all of the word of God. In fact, listen, it's the most frequently repeated command in the Bible, and it is, it's a command that means, because it's in, listen, the, uh, the imperative sense. Uh, listen, but, but it is not a, a harsh command. It's really a, a command that speaks well-being on your life. He's saying, my child, don't be afraid, is what he's saying. It's not, listen, an ominous, listen, a, a very harsh and, and curt command, but it is an imperative, though. He, he says, I don't want you to fear because I'm God, and because I'm omnipotent, because I love you with an everlasting love, because I have all power and I know everything. So no matter what you go through, he's saying, I don't want you to ever become overwhelmed by what you're facing. Are y'all hearing what the law is declaring? That means that whatever challenge you face this week, you ought to have, listen, the capacity right now to lay it on the altar and say, I'm done with that. The Bible said, listen, no weapon formed against you. It shall not prosper. Oh, glory to God. That means that no matter what the enemy has brought against you, the Bible said, I've got a word Listen, in store for you concerning that thing that he's tried to afflict upon your life. And that's why we come celebrating him. Because nobody can do us like him. Because in the imperative form, God is saying, do not fear. And y'all know that sometimes in the Bible, listen, when angels showed up, they showed up saying, fear not. And when you study angels, you'll find that some angels were described as individuals that were 20 feet tall. And I don't know about you, but if somebody 20 feet tall rolled up on me, I'd like to hear him say, don't get scared. 
they got to say it. Listen, or otherwise, we exit in the back door. You hear what I'm saying? Listen, so they came saying, listen, I came to help you. Yeah, thank you for telling me you, listen, you, you're on my side. I'm looking for a way out through that wall, right? There. So they showed up saying, don't fear. See, that, that's, see, that's what God was saying. Y'all know, listen, angels, listen, uh, if they, they have that, listen, that, uh, that mass, uh-huh, if they're that, uh, listen, uh, uh, big, that, uh, listen, of, of foreboding, listen, you got to know that there is someone that can be, uh, listen, a challenge for any enemy force. And when you study about what angels exploits in the Bible, the Bible said, listen, one angel showed up and slayed 85,000 folk in just a night. You don't hear what I'm saying. So God sent an angel, and they'll tell you, don't fear. You better know that God has everything that he needs to take care of everything that you need. That's why we all to line up behind. This is what the Lord has commissioned us to do in the word of God. The Bible tells us, listen, every thought, listen, uh, in the word of God concerning fear not. And even though, listen, that particular do not fear. Listen, I said there's one for 365 different times in the word of God, but the Lord is telling us many times this command is given. I I'm telling you, listen, for the fact of causing us to calm ourselves. Because the Lord said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. And it's not like the world giveth. The first three times this command shows up in the book of Genesis. And y'all know Genesis means beginning, right? We all there? Listen, it starts, listen, in the words, in the beginning, the Bible says. And God is saying in the beginning, I want you not to fear, but I want you to trust me. He said, I will say to you again that during the season of our lives, during this season of our lives, during this particular season of our lives, as the Lord shows up in Bethany, He's reminding us again, don't fear, because I come as a king, but not as you suppose. Listen, don't listen to the words of the world, but you got to know that, listen, that you can't walk in fear and demonstrate faith at the same time. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Can somebody just say again, I'm not scared? Listen, now we know that all during the time that we go through stuff, listen, what I encourage you to do is this. Listen, you should have a concern, but you shouldn't be fearful. I'm not overwhelmed by the stuff that we encounter every day of our lives. And this is what the Bible says, don't be thou therefore. It says, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, listen, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ. This is of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 through verse 10. It says, this is given us in Jesus Christ before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of his son, Jesus Christ, who abolished death. And has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. It's powerful when you know the Lord means business. That means that I can exit this place today with a confidence in my spirit. Knowing that because God is for me, who can be against me? I dare somebody raise their hand and shout, I've got the victory already. Uh-huh. It's normal to have concerns, but God doesn't want that concern to develop in the fear. When there's a concern, that's what, listen, evokes prayer in your heart. That's when you start rebuking the devil. Because I see the enemy at work, and I'm going to call him out. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to command him, listen, to be set in order by the authority of the blood. Come on, somebody shout, I'm not afraid of what the enemy tries to do. The Bible declared in the text today is much like, this is our situation regarding, listen, what we've seen over the last several months. You got to know that, listen, that, 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 listen, that this uh, pandemic that we've gone through uh -huh, is something that transformed minds of individuals that were faithful to God. Uh -huh, and their concern perhaps has, listen, uh, sort of bubbled over into a fear because God is the one. He's the only one that keeps us, the only one that sustains us. I thank God. Listen, I said to the saints, it's interesting to me. As I observed the different individuals as they've gone through, listen, this pandemic, there were folk, listen, that, that wouldn't come to church, 
And there are folks, listen, they wouldn't stop coming. We were shut down. Folks, they would show up at the front door. We been here, listen, doing what I'm doing now with just me and the camera person in here. And they said, well, can I come in? Well, no, they told us to shut the stuff down. So we're trying to abide by what the rules are. Amen, because we are subject to the laws of this land. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They were looking. They said, man, listen, I hear what you're saying, but I, I, need, I need this, is what the saints were saying. They said, no, I need you to go home. But as soon as we got permission, my God opened back up. We didn't wait six years. Uh-huh, listen, when we were in the, listen, when, when the laws were changed, we said, listen, we're, we're open. We're coming. And we've been rebuilding, of course, listen, since that time. But I'm here to tell you, God has always been the one in control. Death seems random to us, but it's, listen, but God is the one that's in control. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's why everybody that's in this room, everybody that's joining us on social media today, listen, you, you, listen, you're here by God's grace. And it's not that it just started during the pandemic, but all of our lives, even long before the pandemic. My God, listen, you better know that God, listen, is in charge. I was told when I was six years old, I wouldn't make it past six. And you don't, listen, and you don't have to look twice to know I'm older than six. Listen, but when you look at what the words, that's why the Lord said, he's the one that's in charge. The Bible said in Psalm number 42, as the heart pants after the water brooks, so pants my soul after thee, O Lord. I'm talking about, a, listen, a church that love God, that desire him more than anything. And what he's saying here, listen, when all is, when we get back, listen, to, to serving the Lord the way he desires us to. David says in verse number, number four, in Psalm 42, it says, I remember, listen, what happened in the church when I attended church. And so I long to get back to that, is what David was saying. He's telling us in this text not to fear stuff. And he wants us to be those, listen, that won't fear. And then the, the last thing I want to encourage you about today, listen, is this. The third thing is to remind you that not only does, listen, they cry out, save us now. Not only does God tell you not to fear, but God says, listen, thirdly, he wants us to be those that know that he's coming, but not like you suppose. The Bible said he came on an ass coat. He didn't just come on, a, listen, on a donkey. He came on the coat. The Bible said he came on the foal of an ass. That meant that he came on the baby of a donkey. He, he was humble when he came. And then they got mad at him because he didn't do what they wanted him to do. He came, y'all know how it was in that day in, in mili uh, militaristic, uh, listen, a sort of um, a perspective. Listen, uh, the, the, <coughs> the, the king rode on a horse that were, listen, hands higher than any other horse on the field. So the king rode on the tallest horse. The next person was on, a, the next tallest horse was, listen, was, a, was ridden by the general of the army. And then all of the army had a horse, listen, that were horses that were similar in height. And then here comes Jesus, listen, the king rolling in, listen, to Bethany, listen, as a king. But he's not on the horse that represents a king. He's on not just a donkey. But he's on the donkey's baby. You don't hear what I'm saying. That's the way he came in. I'm telling you, he's coming, y'all, but not like you suppose. He was one, listen, that said, I don't have to show out, but all I need to do is just show up. It's interesting when you see how he came into Bethany. He came, listen, and it's interesting when you look in Matthew, it said that both, listen, uh, the donkey and the colt was loosed. In the other gospel, they only talk about, listen, listen, the, the, the donkey being loosed uh -huh, or, or, or the colt being loosed, but, but they needed the mama to show up just to keep the baby calm. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So that's all she did. She rolled on, listen, through that. And it's interesting when you have a visual of what the Lord did. The visual is this, that he Listen, came and because he's on the baby donkey. Can y'all? Listen, that's much higher than any other horse, but he had to hold his knees up to keep his feet from dragging the ground. 
I'm telling y'all, the king is coming, but not like you suppose. Come on, tell your neighbor he's coming, but he may not look like you want him to look. Oh, glory to God. He's just simply saying that I'm someone uh -huh, that comes in a spirit of humility, but I still come with all power in my hand. He said I may come in a manner that may not look like I can do much, but God says but whatever you need, he says, I've got it. The Bible said that, listen, that he is omnipotent. He's omniscient. And he's omnipresent. And here he comes riding on a baby donkey. Riding on a foal. Riding on a coat. Uh-huh, perhaps with his feet dragging the ground. My God, and every general, every king, my God, that seemed to have ridden much better than he rode. But I'm here to tell you that when there was a need that came up in the community, nobody can speak to Lazarus like God could speak to them. And anybody in this room glad that, listen, that you have a God that can do anything but fail. I'm here to tell you, it's not about, my God, the outside appearance, but it's about what God has placed on your life, on the inside. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I know it may not look like much, but I thank God I serve a God that is a healer. I serve a God that is a deliverer. I serve a God that is a way maker. I serve a God that is my way over and he is my way out. I serve a God, my God that reached way down and picked me right on up. He's the God that picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. Come on, tell your neighbor, nobody can do me like God. He came in the Bethany. My God, the crying didn't look like much. And here they were throwing palm leaves down on the ground, telling him, my God, you're the one that's coming to save us. You're the one that's coming to give us health and wealth. You're the one that's coming to give us prosperity. But God declared through his son, I came in the earth for one purpose, and that's to deliver you. I came to save you. I came to die for you on the cross. Not just what they desired, but it's what God knew that you needed. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I know you didn't get everything you want, but I'm here to tell you, you serve a God that'll give you everything that you need. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I've got a word for you right now. My word is, he has come in your life. Not like you suppose, but he's still God. Is there anybody in this room that's tried him and you know him and you found him to be a friend? Come on, touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor whatever you need. Come on, tell him God's got it. I dare you try him right now. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate God because you know he is your way maker. Come on, celebrate God because you know he's your peace giver. Come on and celebrate God because you know he's your keeper. When the enemy rushes in like a flood, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. Come on, somebody shout. My God, you may know that my God weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And somebody ought to declare, if I know it's coming in the morning, I may as well uh, go ahead and shout right now. Uh, are there any praises in this house? Uh, are there any glorifiers in this house? Uh, are there any worshipers uh, in this house? Uh, if you know it's coming by morning, uh, a worshiper will give him glory uh, because you know he's a promise keeper. Uh, because you know he is uh, my God, a way maker. Uh, because you know he is uh, a God that loves me uh, beyond anything else uh, in my life. Uh, come on and put those anointed hands together. Uh, and let's do like David said. Uh, oh, magnify the Lord. Uh, with me. Let
let us exalt uh, his name together. Uh, come on and put your hands together uh, and celebrate God. Uh, I dare you get in your mind uh, any needs you have uh, and then start thanking God uh, because you know the need supplier uh, has already moved uh, in your life. Uh, I dare you think about uh, what you've asked God to do uh, and then give him praise uh, because you know in him uh, is already done. Uh, nobody can do me like God. Uh, that's why I praise him. Uh, that's why I celebrate him. Uh, that's why I magnify uh, the name of the Lord. Uh, can you touch three people real quick uh, and tell them you ought to celebrate him now uh, for what you know uh, is already done. Uh, give him praise. Glory. My God, my God. Listen. Listen, listen. Come on, everybody's standing if you would. We've got to get out of here. The Bible said in the next day, Jesus showed up. Listen. In this power, I'm going to ask all the world that you would come real quick. But listen, listen, saints. He does not come as you suppose. This is the moment in the worship experience. Well, listen, we feel, listen, more appropriate if, in fact, we're given a chance, listen, to pray in private and in silence by ourselves. And we understand that. But I, I always think about this, the fact that the Lord did not die for us in private nor in silence. But he died for us on a mountain die for us on a hill. Listen, y'all, this is the only message that, listen, everything in, in, in uh, John chapter 12 speaks to. He came for the purpose of bringing salvation to them. And that's what he's here for today. He's here to bring salvation. He's here to bring deliverance, here to bring peace, here to restore joy, here to restore, my God, confidence in him. In spite of what the world says, listen, the Bible talks about the fact that Jesus suffered. And the Bible said that angels were sent to minister to him. And watch this, and that's the thing, as I said earlier. So that means no matter what challenges you've had in your life, all I'm here to tell you is this. Listen, it's not that God did not show up to get you through it, but the fact that you're still here, you should know that he is already sent his help to give you strength to get through what you've gone through in your life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The Bible, listen, says that angels came, listen, on assignment from heaven to minister to Jesus himself because he was on his way to the cross. Oh, glory to God. And listen, and that means that he strengthened and empowered him to get through what he was going through. I want everybody in this room to know that because you're here, I'm here to tell you that the Lord didn't forget about you. He didn't forget you. He was present. And he gave you strength to get through what you've gone through. Nobody like God. I want to challenge every person in this room that may have a prayer need. I want to challenge you not to wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until this afternoon. I'm here to tell you he's coming not as you suppose. There's a young lady that showed up here. Listen, in service one day, stage four bone cancer. She came, she told, listen, and God healed her. And I'm here to tell you, there's an individual that came to this place. My God, listen, with, uh, with, with organ failure, and God healed. Not as you suppose, but all you got to do, watch this, y'all, is exemplify faith. If you trust God, if you step out and believe him, all you're saying is, God, I bow to you. God, I yield to you. God, I say to you. Mother Walker said in her testimony, she said, I'm not ashamed to listen, to admit anything that's going on. You don't have to tell other folk your stuff. All I want you to do is tell the Lord. I want you to come and say to the Lord, in, in the face of the world, I need God for this. And God is saying, listen, I'm going to move, not like you suppose I'm going to but I'm going to do it when you trust me. Just give it to him and watch what God will do. Watch God deliver. Someone in this room that need to be saved 
and you want to give your heart to the Lord right now. Listen, it's not about what others think. It's only about what the Lord has to say about who you are and whose you are. Let God be glorified. Let God be magnified. Let the strength of the Lord, and I believe this, that the saints in this room that know that there's power in prayer. That's the benefit we have of coming and connecting with another believer. The Bible said if one could chase a thousand, how then shall two set 10,000 to flight? I believe God would do it. You want to see the enemy, listen, set the flight. The Bible said the end, the, listen, that the enemy came one way, but God made them to flee seven ways. You want to see the enemy set to flight. You want to see him run, see him cast out, see him cast down. I challenge you to trust him right now. Listen, to challenge him right now and trust God. Believe God to do it. Oh, glory to God. Listen, I'm not going to leave here with depression. I'm not going to leave here with discouragement. I'm not going to leave here with doubt. I'm going to leave here with financial oppression. I'm going to believe God. I'm not going to leave here with family discord. I'm going to let God have his way in my life. I challenge you to believe him right now. Spirit of the living God, do it right now. Listen, if there are some of you that I know that many saints in this room, many of you have been praying for deliverance and for healing for someone that's connected to you. I told you, if you connect with one of these altar workers real quick, watch God. Listen, you, listen, create a force against the enemy that's exponentially greater when you join together with someone else. That's what the word of God said. That's what we believe in. Let's join together. The Bible said we then, as workers together, the Lord said one chase a thousand, two ten thousand. Come, let's set the enemy at bay. Let him know that we're not going to be overrun. We're not going to be defeated. The Bible said the thief, as a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. You ought to let him know he won't do it on your road. Because God has something more fortuitous in store for your life. God has a word in store for me. God has a plan and a future for my life. And I'm believing God to do it just for me. Let God be glorified. Spirit of the living God. My God. I don't mind. I'm not mad at God because of the challenges that I face. But I'm celebrating God today because he's the one that gave me the strength to get through every challenge, every trial that I face. My God, watch the words. My God, that you speak for yourself. The Lord is declaring to us. The Lord is declaring to us. The Lord is declaring to us. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Trust him right now. I want to pray with those that are on social media, those that may be, listen, making a, power, a powerful decision right now that I want to serve God. I want God to be glorified in my life. I want to let God be magnified. Listen, in every facet of my life today, I want you to join together with me, those on social media, and pray this prayer. Say, dear God, I confess today that I'm a sinner. I confess that I've done things inconsistent with those that's called the child of God. And today, I confess that I'm a sinner. And that, God, I need you to come and save me right now. I pray your word in Romans 10, verse 9 and verse 10. I pray your word that says, listen, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then now I'm saved. Thank you for saving me, making me whole, making me clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive it and believe it, and by faith I declare it done. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Every believer say thank God. Amen. Amen. We praise the name of the Lord. You prayed that prayer and you know that God saved you. You ought to put your name, your contact information in the chat. Celebrating the Lord that you're saved. Give God glory and praise. And the Bible said in Luke 15 and verse 10, there's rejoicing before the presence of angels in heaven. When one sinner repents, and there's not only presence and rejoicing in heaven, but there's rejoicing right here in New Bethel. We praise God for the celebration. Come on, let's praise him and thank God. If you're in this room and you want to be saved, this is your moment right now to tell the Lord thank you. Your moment right now to say, God, I need you. I'm not going to leave like I came in Jesus' name. 
Oh, thank you, Lord, for how faithful you are. Mm. We celebrate him for his goodness toward us. There is nobody like the Lord. Listen, we ought to cherish what God has poured upon our life. Cherish your rest. Cherish your resources. Cherish your reliance on God. You ought to cherish those things. God did this. I didn't do it on my own. But in the midst of every struggle, in the midst of every trial, God has been faithful to us. And I owe him all that I am, all that I have. I owe the Lord right now. And I give him glory, give him praise in this place right now. Thank God for his goodness. Listen, if there's others that want to come, we've got time for you. Nobody's upset in this place but the enemy. Thank God for those of you at your seats. You're praying, my God, for those that have come to the altar. You're praying for others. Listen, all over the building, all over, listen, the social media. You're praying that the hand of the enemy would be rebuked by the power of God. Yokes are destroyed and God is loosing my God of boldness to come to him and declare that I need God. Listen, with everything that's in me, I need him today. And I celebrate the Lord from the depths of my heart. We praise the name of the Lord in this place. If you're in this room today and you're not saved, I want to challenge you today to come and listen and give your life to the Lord and let God be glorified. I'm here to tell you he may not come like you desire, but I'm here to tell you he will show up and do what only God can do in your life. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. My God, I don't know about you, but I'm going to hold on. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to submit to him. I'm going to bow to him. I'm going to give it all to him. Let God be glorified. Oh, glory to God. Trust in him, the song said, who will not leave you. Whatever the years may bring. But when your earthly friends forsake you, still listen what you can do is more closely to him just cling. You ought to lean on the Lord. You ought to trust more in the Lord. You ought to believe more in God. Come on, just lift your heart. Lift your heart and just say, I'm going to trust him more. Come on, lift your heart and say, I'm going to lean on him more. Lift your heart and say, I'm going to listen, believe God more. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. We celebrate the Lord. You already know he loves you. All he wants is what's best for you. Oh, glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm not going to leave without, listen, leaning more. I'm not going to leave without believing more. I'm not going to leave without trusting more. I need God in my life. I'm not going to make the same mistake Israel did. My God, I'm going to take what I need and celebrate God for who he is. Come on, give God glory and praise him all over this house. Nobody like God. Woo! My, 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 my. We thank God for his goodness toward us. What an awesome God. Listen, ask your neighbor if you would. Ask your neighbor, are you saved today? Ask him if you want to give your life to the Lord. Tell him I'll go to the altar with you. My God. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless the saints. We thank God. Thank God for the prayer. Listen, the worshipers in this room, point your hand in this direction to those that's on this side. My God, and just start, listen, celebrating the Lord. Start interceding for a moment. We're just about done. We're ready. We'll get you back to your cars. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord for what he's doing in the lives of those that God is ministering to here. It's something powerful when we listen we get beyond ourselves and make others' challenges more important than our own time, than our own schedule, than our own, listen, focus. The Lord was always outward focus. Thank God for what he's doing. Lift your voice and call on the Lord for a moment. God, we thank you for it. God, we celebrate you now. We bind the enemy. We cast him out. Come on, intercessors. 
Let's celebrate the Lord. We believe God. Mm, God, we celebrate you. The enemy is a liar. He's defeated. Has no place, has no authority in the life of any believer. And we honor him for how faithful he is to each one of us. We praise the name of the Lord in this place. What a powerful time it is to be in the house of the Lord. If you're glad about what the Lord has done, come on, put your hands together and celebrate him in this place. What a mighty God we serve. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Listen, you can go to your seat giving God praise. Thank God. Come on, praise him along the way. It's just an atmosphere, y'all. An atmosphere of, of, listen, of deliverance. An atmosphere of praise. Glory to God. Whew. My God. We celebrate him right now. What a mighty God. Spirit of the living God. Thank God for his goodness toward us. Mm. Thank God for the atmosphere. Mm. Whew, glory. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. We praise the name of the Lord. Listen, he's not just doing it here, but he's doing it there as well. Somebody else in this room, always just lift your hand and receive what God has. You've been praying. You've been believing God. My God. And there's something about waiting on the Lord. And you know you're not waiting on him necessarily, but what you're doing is allowing God the moment of trust and belief in us. It's your faith that releases the miraculous in your life. And even as we're here, my God, just waiting my God yielded, waiting and still, waiting and trusting, waiting and believing, waiting and depending. I'm here to tell you, God will show up. Some stuff that you came in here with, you'll look for when you leave. You won't see it presence anymore. I'm here to tell you, God who knows and God who loves, God is the one that delivers. And we praise him right now for his faithfulness toward us. Come on, put your hands together. Thank God for his goodness. Don't forget, uh, saints of God, thank you tomorrow uh, night prayer, 630. Let's come believing God, come trusting him. Uh, don't forget uh, Wednesday night, uh, 630 for Bible study, 7 o'clock p.m., uh, 730 on Wednesday night, uh, pastoral teaching. Then we're back on the Thursday night. Powerful time. Uh, communion gonna be, will be served. Seven last saying. Powerful preachers will be here uh, to share with us uh, that night. And we're looking forward to the Lord doing great and wondrous things. Amen. You want to come. Invite others to come. I believe God will do great exploits in the lives of every believer. Amen. We thank God. Listen, all the while you're here today, uh, you have a moment to give your life to the Lord. I've seen folk get saved in the uh, uh, fellowship after service before. Uh, but know that's our heart, is to see souls saved and added to the kingdom of God. Listen, we want a soul today, and then we're going uh, to go from this place. We thank God for each of you uh, and your uh, faithfulness to God. God bless the deacons that are serving today. If you need an envelope, you can lift your, uh, your hands. The deacons will be glad to serve you, Deacon James. Uh, Deacon Osborne, uh, thank God for these saints of God. Uh, we praise God for each of you again. We celebrate the Lord for our guests today. Uh, we're so glad uh, that you're here. We thank God for you. 
If you are sewing, uh, then we want you to know that there is uh, various platforms you can use to sew. You can use uh, our online giving. Uh, the website is www.newbethelchurch.com. Uh, you can search on the website for uh, e-giving, and you can sow your gifts there. Uh, if you're using Cash App, the cash tag is dollar sign N B C L T one five two zero dollar sign N B for New Bethel, uh, C L T for Charlotte fifteen twenty uh, is the street address. Dollar sign N B C L T one five two zero. Thank you for your uh, liberal giving today and your generous hearts. So listen, you ought to be. Uh, as every one of us encouraged to be a tither, to be uh, those that trust God. Every time we've experienced increase in our life, we owe the Lord a tithe, amen, of that. Every time we experience increase, we owe the Lord a tithe. I was sharing an illustration of, uh, of uh, selling a house my wife and I did not long ago. Uh, and when we compared what we bought the house for to what we sold it for, and we determined uh, what the tithe was that was our increase uh, and we we have sown uh, that into the the ministry we thank God but we trust God God said that if you if you tithe you would open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings but he said if you refuse to tithe he says uh, then you know uh, that the, the money that you have in your pocket the Lord said I didn't say it he said that it's cursed you never overcome that. You want to trust God. Just the fact that we know that he is our source. Amen. Will you stand all over the house? We thank God for each of you. We trust God. If you want to use Givelify to give, you can key in the Givelify app, New Bethel Church of God in Christ. Uh, 1520 Little Rock Road will appear as your, on your options. That's our address. Thank you for giving. And then we show faith in God when we give. Amen. God has been so gracious to, uh, to my family and, and I believe to the New Bethel family. You know that God's been good to anyone in this room that know that you're blessed. I want you just to raise your hand so you know this is unscripted, un, uh, unsolicited. God has blessed the saints and we're blessed because we believe in giving. We believe in tithing. We believe in trusting God. Thank you for your liberal hearts. God, we love you today and thank you for every seed, every sower. Multiply every gift back to the life of every giver, even a thousandfold. We believe it done. We call it so. We thank you now in Jesus' name. God, we pray as your word has declared that you would cause all grace to abound toward us. That God, that we'll have all sufficiency in all things. And you said we would abound to every good work. Thank you that your word said that we should remember you for you are the one that gave us the strength to acquire what we now have. And God, we want to be good stewards over it that your name would be glorified. We believe it's done. We thank you now that it's so and we give you the glory in Jesus name. And every believer say, thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints of God. Listen, for those of you that are sowing, if you're giving by uh, using your envelope, you can come, those on this side can come and so what Deacon James is, if you're on this side, you can just file out from the rear and come and you can sow right where Deacon Osborne is. If you want to give by debit card, that's the way I like to give. Uh, Deacon Alexander, wave your hand, Deacon is on the, the left side and Sister Tanya uh, Johnson is on the right side over here. These, these saints would be glad to serve you uh, if you want to give by debit card. Thank you for your liberal giving. As the musicians bless us, I'm going to ask you to please march and bring the Lord your gifts. God bless you.
Amen. God bless you. We're standing, saints of God. God, we thank you for every seed, every sower. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're celebrating Sister Ressie. Thank God for her. Uh, we praise God for this woman of God. We also want to mention uh, that Sister Jensen uh, Crowder, uh, she attends uh, Kentucky State, uh, and she has been uh, elevated to or received the award. She's being added to the National Honor Society. Uh, she is in her, her junior year. She has one more year. Uh, and we praise God. God has shown her great favor. Very uh, faithful uh, young lady. We thank God for her. Uh, and let's keep her in prayer. God has made ways and opened doors for this young lady who loved the Lord. So we thank God for Sister Jensen Crowder. Wave your hand, uh, Missionary Crowder. Uh, that's her baby. We praise God for her. Amen, and for the great work that she's doing. As we prepare to go from this place, uh, let's join hands with our neighbor and let's celebrate the Lord. Listen, what will cause this season to be the most, I think, powerful that I believe the Lord wants is for us to go out and invite others uh, to come be a part of what the Lord's doing. We ought to see as many people saved and giving their life to the Lord as possible and let that be the mark for this ministry as we go forward. Amen. We are not just satisfied with being saved. We want to see how many others we can influence to give their life to the Lord uh, and serve the Lord as well. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God, we love you today and thank you for the saints that have assembled and for those friends that have come today to celebrate and acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. Take us now from this place, the various destinations that you've got uh, on our schedule, we pray God safe travel to every destination, enjoying sweet fellowship even as we go. We bind the hand of the enemy and we cast the devil out. Thank you, God, for releasing favor in the lives of these saints of God, causing the hand of the enemy to be exposed. God, we thank you now for the victory. And God, we celebrate you for it in advance. And God, we call it done and declare it so and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And every believer say thank God. Amen. Come on now, embrace someone before you go and tell that someone that you love them and tell them the Lord loves you as well.